if we haven't met before, my name is Ashley, and I'm the senior pastor here. And this is week two of a series called Discern, all about how there's a natural realm that we see right in front of us, and there is a supernatural, heavenly spirit realm that we don't see. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, We don't focus our attention on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but the unseen realm is eternal. And last week we talked a little bit about magic eye, you know that, the the visual thing from the 90s where you see one picture, but there's like a hidden 3D picture. It was a big deal when I was a kid in elementary school, and so I thought I'd bring us back some magic eye today. It's basically you see one thing, but you're looking for the hidden picture, and so we have this Slightly creepy magic eye of some little cherubs. See if you can see the 3D image that's on the screen. You might have to cross your eyes. You might have to zoom your eyes out. Some of you are really good at this, and you can see those 3D images right away. And the rest of us, not so much. It takes a little effort. Anybody see the 3D image? Yeah, some of you are removing your glasses. That's a good strategy. I don't know. Maybe that helps. It doesn't. (laughs) This one was really tough for me. Last week's was way easier. Anybody see it over here yet? Usually the younger, the youth get it before the rest of us. We're counting on you, Hope Youth. Well, when you see it, it's basically two of those cherubs just popped out over kind of towards the left-hand side. A couple people in our office could see it. I personally can only see that there's something there, not actually what it is. Give you one more minute, see if you can see it. Anybody find this one? Oh, yeah, okay, we got some people here. All right. We're seeing the unseen. Some people have eyes that are watering. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) I appreciate the effort. Maybe dial it back a little. I want you to be able to see later. All right, we could take it down. But this actually helps us because some of the beings in the unseen realm that we're talking about today are angels. They don't look at all like that picture. Thank you, Jesus. You know, most of us, we get our theology of angels from TV. Um, Let's see, It's a Wonderful Life, you know, anytime a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. Not quite, right? Um, Angels in the outfield, field of dreams. Sports angels was like a really big thing in the 90s. I don't know why, but sports angels, man, not in the Bible, but fun. Um, Let's see. Romance angels were a big thing when I was about 12 years old, 1998. uh, Meet Joe Black, little fallen angel kind of deal going on. City of Angels, anyone seen that one? Nobody, whoa. Thank you, thank you. It's the little Sarah McLachlan song that went with that movie. In the arms of the angels, fly away. Anybody, that one? How about Touched by an Angel? Come on. Thank you. All the Christians have seen Touched by an Angel. There is Tess and Monica and the guy. I don't remember his name. They were Sam, and they were helping people. So sweet. Uh, A little bit later in the early 2000s, we get the show Charmed and Buffy the Vampire Slayer and all those things kind of wrestle with angels and demons. But y'all, you've seen angel things out there, right? And that's probably where you've gotten a lot of your ideas about angels, yes? We're going to see what the Bible actually says. It's so much better. The first thing the Bible tells us is that angels were created through Jesus. Colossians 1, 17 to 18. Everything, absolutely everything, above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank after rank of angels, everything got started in Jesus and finds its purpose in him. He was there before any of it came into existence, and he holds it all together right up until this very moment. Where did angels come from? Well, God created them through Jesus. The book of Job tells us that angels were there when God was creating the world, and they were praising God as they watched the earth 
being formed. That's pretty cool. They were there when the earth was made and mankind was created. So it goes, God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, then angels, and then humanity were created. Every angel is a direct creation of God. And Jesus actually tells us they don't marry, they don't procreate. Luke 20, 35 says, Jesus replied, marriage is meant for this world only, the natural world. Those who are worthy of the resurrection from the dead into glory become immortal like the angels who never die nor marry. Okay, angels are spirit beings. They never die. They never marry. They never have more little angel babies. There's a myriad of angels that already exist from before the time we existed. They're never decreasing, and they're never increasing. Some people think that when you die, you become an angel. And that's such a nice thought, but it's not in Scripture. We don't graduate to become angels. We are already made in the image of God. That's the highest form that you could have, made in the image of God. 1 Peter 1.12 says, do you realize how fortunate you are? Angels would have given anything to be in on this. The angels are like, man, that's awesome for you. In eternity, the Bible says, we're even going to judge angels. Heaven is populated with angels and people. We get a picture of that in Hebrews 12.22. It says, you've come to Mount Zion, the city where the living God resides. The invisible Jerusalem is populated by throngs of festive angels and Christian citizens. Angels, and then those of us who have gone asleep in Jesus, Christian citizens, those who have believed and live again in heaven alongside angels. Cool, I can't wait to have some angel neighbors. You know, we kind of already do. Angels are eternal spirit beings, and so they don't have a set earthly form. Rather, they take on a few different forms that we see in the Bible. And they appear to different ways, to different people in different ways. Sometimes someone will see one, someone else won't. That's also in the Bible. The only two angels mentioned in the Bible by name are, anyone want to guess? Gabriel and Michael. Yes. And we see both of them in the book of Daniel. And both times, Daniel describes the angel, and then he says, and then I fainted. (laughs) Poor Daniel. They're very intense looking sometimes. And we're going to look at one, Daniel 10 and uh, verse 4. We looked at the, the passage after this actually last week, but here's the description of the angel, the heavenly messenger who brought his answer to prayer from God. And here's what it says. On the 24th day of the first month, I was standing on the bank of the great river, the Tigris. I looked up and to my surprise saw a man dressed in linen with a belt of pure gold around his waist. His body was hard and glistening as if sculpted from a precious stone, his face radiant, his eyes bright and penetrating like torches, his arms and feet glistening like polished bronze, and his voice deep and resonant, sounded like a huge choir of voices. I, Daniel, was the only one to see this. There we go. So he sees an angel. Everybody else is like, what's happening? The men who were with me, although they didn't see it, they were overcome with fear They ran off and hid, fearing the worst. Like, I can't see what is unseen right now, but it's like probably really intense from what Daniel's looking like. Left alone after the appearance, abandoned by my friends. I went weak in the knees, the blood drained from my face. I heard his voice at the sound of it, I fainted, fell flat on the ground, face in the dirt. A hand touched me and pulled me up to my hands and knees. Daniel, he said, man of great quality, listen carefully to my message. And get up on your feet. Stand at attention. I've been set to bring you news. When he had said this, I stood up and I was still shaking. Relax, Daniel, he continued. So when he saw the angel, he's like, ah! And everybody else who didn't see the angel was like, ah! And sometimes you'll see something that someone else won't see. There's what we see, the natural realm, and then there's the unseen realm. I suppose that, you know, sometimes we see things when others don't is because our eyes are open. You know, last week we talked about Elisha and Gehazi and how Elisha, he's like, I see tons of warriors of fire, angelic beings, 
Gehazi, you don't see that. He prayed for him, and then he could see it. We've got to open our eyes because these are for every believer to see, not just special people. All God's gifts are given out for everyone. Um, sometimes we're more comfortable operating in some gifts over some others, but they're for everyone, not just special people. A couple months ago, I shared with you just some pictures I was taking at Refresh, uh, where all of our servant leadership teams get together in the morning, and we're encouraged and inspired, and we pray together, and we worship together, and we have community together. And I was just going around taking pictures, because I was like, this is so cool. I love this, and I love these people. And I took one picture, which looked pretty normal, if you guys want to put that on the screen. And then the next picture, within two seconds, this is the next picture, You can still see some of the people's legs there, you know. Is that a mistake of light? No, I really believe with childlike faith that that's an angel that was over our worship huddle. Come on. The Bible speaks of angels of light. That's one of the ways they're described, one of the forms that they take. And it also speaks of fallen angels or demons. That's what we're going to look at next Sunday. You don't want to miss that. And we're going to look at it from not a fear-filled perspective at all. This will encourage you and empower you and actually strengthen your faith. Uh, Some angels, there are cherubim, there are seraphim. They're described as having wings. The cherubim, they guard the throne of God. These are the same ones who guarded the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve were put out of it for their own good so they didn't eat from the tree of life and live forever. Those angels are kind of warrior angels. And the way they look, it's described in different places in the Bible, but basically they have a form of a human with four faces. One is a human, one is a lion, one is an ox, one is an eagle. They have four wings. They have hooved feet. They have human hands. They have wings covering their bodies, and they look like blazing fire. If I saw one of those, I would faint. Seraphim, these are angels who offer worship and praise. They have six wings. Two wings cover their faces. Two wings cover their feet. Two keep them in the air. And as they are suspended in the air, they say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Worship angels. There are times when angels actually show up in the Bible looking like human beings. There's this one time when Lot is in Sodom right before the city's destroyed. And he's just out at the edge of the city. And these two guys show up. And he's like, hey. You're strangers in this city. You know, it's customary to take strangers in for the night. It's actually a really dangerous city. So you're going to want to come to my house. And they had dinner with him and they slept there. And he was entertaining angels and he didn't know it. Hebrews 13, 2 says, Do not forget to entertain strangers. For by doing so, some people have entertained angels without knowing it. I had a friend who was in a car accident a few years ago, and this man appeared out of nowhere and lifted up their car so they could get out, and when they looked around, the man was gone. I think that was an angel. Sometimes they take human form. You know, we have God, the Holy Spirit, with us, but there are some times when God wants to do other things that he needs a physical form for as well, not just in us and through us, but through his angels who he created. There are angels all around us right now, at this moment, in the spiritual world. What are they doing? That's what we're going to talk about. Point one today, angels are God's servants who minister to you. They're not playing baseball. They're probably enjoying you playing baseball, like cheering you on. Yeah, hope your team wins. Go Yankees. They get assignments from God. Jacob, he got a vision of this in the Old Testament, Genesis 28, 12. He dreamed. A stairway was set on the ground, and it reached all the way to the sky. Angels of God were going up and going down it. What were they doing? They were going up to God to get their assignment, coming back down to the earth. They're in heaven. They're coming back to carry out his will and go back. A constant flow. Because God, he's always dispatching his angels. We see another example in Job, Job 1, 6. Now, one day it came time for the sons of God, God's heavenly messengers, to present themselves to the eternal one, to give reports and receive instructions. There are lots of times in the Bible where angels come to minister. There was an angel of God who woke up Elijah when he was running from Jezebel. The angel woke him up, prepared food for him, had him go back to sleep, 
woke him up again a little bit later, gave him some more food because the journey was too much for him. Ministering angels. Angels ministered to Jesus after he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and the devil tempted him. The Bible says, then the angels ministered to him. Before Jesus was arrested, an angel appeared to him and strengthened him. What about guardian angels? Well, there's one verse that people kind of uh, use to support this theory, and it's the words of Jesus, Matthew 18, 10. Watch that you don't treat a single one of these childlike believers arrogantly. You realize, don't you, that their personal angels are constantly in touch with my Father in heaven. Personal angels. Personal angels, what do they do? They encourage us. They partner with God's purposes for our lives. Kind of like a personal assistant from God. As Christians, you know, we have the Holy Spirit in us. And we can talk to God directly, which is so awesome. Thank you, Jesus. So, so why does he also send angels? Well, the Bible doesn't specifically speak to that. But if we know who God is, he's love. And all that he does is love. Then what if it's because God the Father saw fit to send someone whose only job is to love you every day of your life? Someone in the spirit realm ministering to you, protecting you, because he cares about you. You can read more about people's personal experiences with angels. There's a really good book out there called The Veil by Blake Healy. And this is just someone who operates in seeing what's happening in the heavenly realm. And everything he sees lines up with scripture. And he talks about seeing people's personal angels and how they all look different. But all of them are representing God. And all of them are excited for their human. And all of them care about their human. But they are limited because humans have free will. So they can't just step in and do whatever they want. We have to give them permission. Scripture is clear that angels guard and protect human beings. Psalm 91, 11, it says, God sends angels with special orders to protect you wherever you go, defending you from all harm. If you walk into a trap, they'll be there for you, and they'll keep you from stumbling. That encourages me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. You know, angels, they're so gentle that there can be personal angels for little children. But at the same time, they're so intense that that in the Old Testament, one angel took out 185,000 Assyrian soldiers who were opposing God's people. That's crazy. And you don't have to be afraid of them executing justice or judgment on you. You're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And they are guardians of his righteousness. Second point today is angels are warriors who protect you. Warriors who protect you. God sent angels to rescue the Israelites from Egypt, to deliver Daniel from the mouth of the lions. An angel woke up Peter in jail. Peter thought it was a dream. The angel released his chains, let him out, took him to freedom. It was an angel that God sent to save him from Herod. Psalm 34, 7, God's angel sets up a circle of protection around us while we pray. What a cool visual. I don't know what they look like. Maybe they're the angel in Daniel that makes everybody faint, you know. But while we're praying, there's stuff going on in the heavenly realms. Not only is God hearing our prayers and answering them instantly, but there are angels surrounding us. That's amazing. Other translations say this happens while we worship. There's a circle of protection around us while we worship. Just like last week, Elijah and Gehazi, they were surrounded by chariots of fire, angelic beings. Knowing who angels are and what they look like, that is so comforting to me. We're not just praying. Yeah, we're praying, but there's so much going on beyond what we can see. The book of Revelation, it talks about how Michael and the angels, they're mighty warriors, and they kicked Satan out of heaven to the earth, and the blood of Jesus and his testimony at the cross, it has the power to defeat all the works of the devil so that Satan and his demons, they are no match for God and his angel armies. That's encouraging. Every victory is already his. Thank you, Jesus. Third point about angels, they are messengers who direct you. They are messengers who direct you. One time my husband and I were hiking in the Adirondacks a few years ago. 
And we didn't sign the little book you're supposed to sign that lets people know that, you know, you were there and you're on this trail in case you get lost. And, and wouldn't you know, we did get a little lost. And while we were on like this steep, just incline of all rocks, these two guys just appeared out of nowhere, like from the opposite direction. And they're like, hey, you're off the path. You want to go that way? And we're like, oh, thank you. And the next minute, they're gone. I'm like, who were those guys? And why were they not on the path? And they're telling us to get back on the right path. I think they were angels. Thank you for directing us. Because we have the Holy Spirit. But even sometimes we hear him and we're like, oh, you know, that." You know, that, that's just a thought I had. I had one this week when I was driving with my kids to school, and I was like, oh, I should take the longer, more scenic route. And I was like, nah, that'd be a waste of time. And like two minutes later, we get behind like five miles of traffic. There was a four-car accident and just, you know, it ended up taking a much longer time. I was like, I really should have listened to that first idea. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Sometimes we need messengers to direct us. Like we saw with Daniel giving him instructions, encouraging him about things to come. Gideon, you know, angel comes to him and says, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Speaking who he is, encouraging him, even though he doesn't feel like a warrior. Gabriel appeared to the Virgin Mary, told her what was going to happen. I love it when he shows up to her, he's like, you are highly favored, blessed. And still she's like, ooh, what is going on here? She didn't faint like Daniel, probably because he was, you know, so sweet on, on the start of that conversation. But he's like, hey, you're going to give birth to a son by the power of the Holy Spirit. And she's like, okay, let it be so. Messenger. Angels appeared to the shepherds after Jesus was born. Luke 2 and verse 10. Let's look at it together. They said, don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody worldwide. A Savior has been born in David's town, a Savior who is Messiah and Master. This is what you're to look for, a baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. Or lying in a manger. <laughs> At once, the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in the heavenly heights. I know I didn't put this on the screen. Peace to all men and women on earth who please him. As the angel choir withdrew into heaven, the shepherds talked it over. Let's go to Bethlehem and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They needed those angels to be like, this is a big event. They're like, okay, we get the message. Let's go see baby Jesus. An angel appeared to Joseph in a dream. He said, hey, it's okay to marry Mary. The baby in her is from the power of the Holy Spirit. You're good. Let's see, an angel appeared to Paul, told him they were going to get in a shipwreck, but they were going to be fine. An angel appeared to Philip, told him what road to go on. And when he was on that road, the Holy Spirit's like, hey, go speak to that Ethiopian eunuch. And basically, that, that one guy was saved and probably generations all from that one encounter. Cornelius had a vision of an angel of God, and the Bible says it looked as real as his next door neighbor. And the angel said, go to Peter. He's going to tell you about Jesus and the way to be saved. I read a story from Billy Graham. He talked about a neurosurgeon who uh, was just at home one wintry day, and a little girl shows up at his door, and she's like, hey, will you come and help this woman? He's like, I'm a neurosurgeon. I don't, I don't make house calls. But he went with the girl anyway. He just felt like, man, this seems like an emergency. And he follows her to a house, and he goes into the house, and there's this woman there who really needs medical attention. And he ends up calling an ambulance for her. And he's like, man, it is so good that your daughter came when she did because I don't think you would be here today if she hadn't come gotten me. And she's like, what daughter? I don't have a daughter. Billy Graham's like, I think that was an angel. Messengers sent from God to carry out his purposes on the earth. One more thing about angels, point four. Angels are worshipers who will worship God with you in eternity. Worshipers. As servants, we need to know they are not to be worshipped. I think sometimes we can get our wires a little bit crossed on this, and I think it's worth looking at Revelation 22, 8 to 9. He says, I fell on my face to worship at the feet of the angel who laid all this out before me. And the angel objected, no, you don't. I'm a servant just like you and your companions, the prophets, and all who keep the words of this book. 
worship God. That's what the angel said, worship God. They're created for God's glory, just like we were. Don't mistakenly worship them. You know, there are whole just books and all these things devoted to angels. I'm talking about them, but this is the only time we're talking about them this year because they're just part of everything that God has done because of his love. Don't miss the giver because of the gifts. Sometimes, you know, we get obsessed with researching these things and praying to these things and no, 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 don't swing the pendulum too far. Angels, they lead worship at the throne of God. Revelation 5 and verse 11, it says, I looked and I heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousands times ten thousand. They encircled the throne in a loud voice. They sang, worthy is the lamb who is slain, Jesus, to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. They lead worship in heaven. And right now they are here with us. Every time we worship corporately. Some of you have seen worship angels on this stage when the band is ministering. They're lifting burdens around this room. They're pouring out gifts from God. Remember, they go up and down the stairs to heaven, receiving from God direction and messages and the things that are already ours in the heavenly realm. There's so much good stuff going on in the spiritual realm when God's people gather together. You know, we get here and we prepare at 7 on Sunday mornings, but the angels, they're already here. They're preparing. They're preparing when you're at a hope group. Wherever God's people gather, they're there. There's so much good stuff. It helps me and my family, you and your family. Don't miss out. I know it can be tempting at the end of church, just to kind of check out, like, all right, we're done. I got other stuff to do. Don't miss out. There's stuff happening in the heavenly realm that you can't see when we're singing those last two songs. There's things God has for you, but you have free will. You can receive those things, or you can allow the enemy to distract you, and we'll talk a little bit more about that next week, but Usually when God has something for you, the predictable scheme of the enemy is to distract you from that. That's all the power he has is distraction. And if we don't know that, sometimes we fall for that scheme, you know. It's the distraction of your phone going off. It's the distraction of, I have so much to do today. It's the distraction of, man, that coffee I drank too much. Distractions. But if you will stay here and just Worship God. He has so much for you. He loves you. He has love poured out for you. The angels, they point us back to a good and kind God who is always loving us, always helping us. It started with the blood of his son, Jesus. We heard last week about that engagement ring he gave us, the Holy Spirit. And then on top of that, he has angels we're here with us. Thank you, Jesus. In the Garden of Gethsemane, before Jesus went to the cross, the Roman soldiers, they came to arrest Jesus. And he said, do you suppose I can't appeal to my father and he will immediately provide me with more than 12 legions of angels? That's 80,000 angels. But Jesus He willingly allowed them to arrest him. All he had to do was speak one word, and those angels would have come to his aid. But he didn't do that because he had chosen to go to the cross for us. The Bible says, for the joy set before him, for people to reconcile God's creation to him. He didn't activate the angels. So that you could. So you could have angels who are God's servants, who minister to you. Angels who are warriors, who protect you in the heavenly realms. Angels who are messengers, who direct.
protect you. Angels who are worshipers, who worship with you in eternity, who are worshiping with us in this room because of Jesus. Angels, they point us to God. They reveal his goodness. But the ultimate goodness, it starts with trusting in God for salvation. It starts with believing in that gift of salvation from Jesus. Believing that he died for me. He died for you. And not because you're some horrible person. No, 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 no. Because our sin has separated us from the righteousness of God. And God, he had a plan from the very beginning so that we could be restored to him because he loves us. God is love and he sent himself, his son, in human form to die for us, to be a sacrifice in our place so that we didn't have to make payment for our sins. Jesus already did that. And so now we experience direct access to God, all of his blessings in the heavenly realm, everything he intended for us from the beginning of time. And it starts with trusting in Jesus. Let's pray together. We're going to close our eyes. We're going to bow our heads. Maybe you're here today and you don't know Jesus. I'm so excited for you that you're here right now because I think this message is for you. If you want to trust in Jesus today, it's a matter of believing with your heart. That's something that's unseen, but then confessing with your mouth the see in the natural realm. And so we like to pray out loud together. And it's really not the words of the prayer that are special, but it, it's that decision that you're making that impacts not just what you see, but it impacts everything for all eternity. And so we're going to pray together. Let's pray out loud, church. We say, God, I give you my heart. I give you my life. I trust in Jesus. Thank you for his blood poured out for me. God, thank you for your Holy Spirit who teaches me, who guides me, who shows me how to live for you. I give my life to you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep your heads bowed, your eyes closed. If you just prayed that prayer, would you just put your hand right up in the air? Nobody's looking around except for me. That's so awesome. I see so many hands up, so many decisions to trust in Jesus. You can put it right back down. Let's celebrate together. There's a party going on in heaven. There's a party going on right here. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. So excited for you. It's the best decision that you can make. I want to encourage you. Start talking to God. That's prayer. Get a Bible. Get to know him. Listen for him to speak to you. We're going to have our prayer team come to the front of the stage right now. They would love to pray for you. They'd love to celebrate with you if you trusted in Jesus. If you've got something going on in your life, maybe it's something you've been dealing with for a long time and you've just learned to live with, they would love to pray for you. We had a lady last week at 9 a.m. She came forward for prayer. And I got to share this at 11, but you guys didn't get to hear yet. She came forward for something that had chronically bothered her, something that she was just living with because that was normal. And someone prayed for her and God healed her. Her pain immediately went away. She gave me up to church. She was weeping. She's like, thank you, Jesus. It is always God's will to heal you. That is a blessing that has already been given in the heavenly realm. Sometimes it takes a little bit. Sometimes it's instant. I don't know why. But it's always his will to heal you. God has this and so many other blessings for you, and they're available. He's just waiting for us to say yes to him. Yes, I believe. Yes, I trust you, Father. So if you have anything that's weighing you down, any burdens, his angels are here ministering to you. It says so in the Bible. Don't miss out on what he has for you. Now, you might be feeling some kind of way, like, I really need to get going. You know, I got a lot to do today. It's 10.04. I want to tell you, I preached a really short message again. Good job. On purpose. Last week, we had more people leave the 11 than ever before at the end because they had somewhere to go. And it was such a short message, you guys. Please don't miss the end. This is what everything leads up to. I don't know how else to say it, but it breaks my heart when people miss out on what their father has for them. It's literally here.
we just receive by faith. And God, he loves us so much, he gives us that free will so we can say, no thanks, not today. But why don't you know that breaks the Father's heart? Because he has good things for you. He wants you to see today how he sees you. Maybe you've been believing a lie, you have a stronghold. I run in those all the time during, during the week with kids in our chapel, you know? Those lies, they come in at a young age. And at our school, kids will say things like, I'm just a bad kid. Who told you that? You have a good heart because of Jesus. That's a lie. But they've got to choose to say, I don't believe that lie anymore. Now, now that's an example with a child. I know our lies, by the time we grow up and become adults, they look different and more specific, but they're still lies. You need to believe what God says about you. Are you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? You are his deeply loved child. You are highly favored totally blessed because of Jesus. If you've got any of those things going on, have someone pray for you. I love being prayed over. I'm like, this is a cool free benefit we get from God every single week. We get to pray for to God, but we can also have other people pray over us. What a gift. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe during these next two songs, your next step is just worship. Just focusing on who God is just responding to him maybe in words maybe in prayer maybe speaking in your prayer language maybe not speaking at all maybe being seated maybe standing maybe lifting your arms i don't know what it is for you but i know that god has something for you to receive this is our time to receive it thank you jesus because of him all God's promises are yes and amen. Let's stand together and let's worship. Man, like we've never worshiped before. Let's put it all out on the altar. If you need prayer, come forward at any time. You can make lines behind the prayer people. Then they'll know like, oh, I need to hurry it up so I can pray for you too. That's fine. Let's worship. God, thank you for who you are. Thank you that you are love, and we respond today to your love. Some of us, we just need to receive your love. Let you love us, God. No excuses, no what ifs, just receive. Childlike faith.